Atiku Abubakar arrived in Nigeria from Dubai yesterday. On the other hand, APC goons have increased their attacks on P2B, not just them alone, even PDP members are attacking P2B at this time. Are we in a new campaign? What is really going on? While Atiku Abubakar said the reason he came back to Nigeria from Dubai was because of the neck meeting that PDP will hold. Being the presidential candidate in the last election, he's the leader of the PDP for now. So he needs to be here. But that's not the only reason he's back in Nigeria. This is because what P2B is doing in northern Nigeria, many politicians are not happy about it. They want to counter him by all means. That's why there's a sudden increase from the APC on their attacks on P2B. P2B has simply refused to let go, unlike Atiku Abubakar, who left for his base in Dubai a few weeks after the Supreme Court verdict. So despite all their narrative, he's still waxing strong. In the beginning, they said he didn't have any structure to win a presidential election. From not having the structure to winning many states and scoring more than 6 million votes, that's the INEC allocation by the way, all these he achieved in less than a year. Imagine having three years before another presidential election. Not that P2B is campaigning. After all, he's been doing this for many years. He's been breaking fast with Muslims during Ramadan. So it's not as if it is new, but surely he's creating a good impression about himself. And as a trader, he recognizes a market when he sees one. You know, politicians, they always brag that they have the grassroots. That's what they use to negotiate with politicians who are contesting for elections. They want to be the middlemen between these politicians and the grassroots. But Peter B is having none of that. He's going to the market directly by himself. If a businessman goes to the market himself, he will market his goods directly to the consumers. No middlemen needed. That's exactly what he's doing. So many politicians are not happy because the only thing they can use to negotiate with him in future is gone. Yes, if you are trying to tell someone that you control the grassroots and the person is already in the grassroots, people are seeing him, people are interacting with him, he's taking photos, he's eating with them. He has completely made you irrelevant. And many people will say, ah, is it not these people, we know them, when the time comes, they will still vote for the people who oppress them, who have plunged them in poverty. But there's a difference this time around. Let's start from Buhari's administration. They weren't even told to vote for Buhari. Most of them saw it as an obligation to vote for him, to put him in power against Good Luck Jonathan. Many Southerners also had the view at the time that he would be different. Fast forward to 2023, when Buhari left office, he did not even attempt to solve the problems. Many of the problems in the North and Nigeria at large tripled or doubled. In fact, before he left power, many Northerners were already criticizing him. Now, during the presidential election campaigns, many of them were told, support this person because he supported Buhari, because he's a Muslim, he will do this. Many lines they used to convince them up north to support Tinubu. But 10 months in, it is clear to everybody, even the people that told them to support this person, people that convinced them, are already crying. They are already regretting why they voted for him in the first place. So who is going to convince who next time? You see, it's easy for people to generalize because of Nigeria's history, but this time it is different. Many people will use lines like, hey, he only has four years to go. It will come back to the north. We will try to solve the problem, but many will refuse because how many times will you fool someone before he will say, hey, I am being fooled. This is a lie. We have to do the right thing. So there are many things at stake going forward. Look at the places where P2B drilled boreholes in the north. Most of them never had water for years. It's an indictment on not just the leadership, the governors, the local government chairman, everybody. So it's easy to tell them, hey, you already know that no one buys bread cheaper than any other. There's no special market for anybody, whether the person is in this party or not. Everyone goes to the market. The same thing on insecurity, it affects everyone. So it will be easy to make a choice when the time comes and the fact that these people can be easily convinced, even if it's based on religion or anything, a superior argument will convince them when the time comes. 
It's already clear to everyone that no person buys bread cheaper than the other. Everyone goes to the same market. Insecurity affects everyone. So, it will be easy to make the choice unless they have not yet learned their lessons. In Nigeria as a whole, you find more victims of bad governance in the north compared to the south. In the south, there are more opportunities for jobs, unlike the north. So the ball is in their court to emancipate themselves from the people that have enslaved and impoverished them. All the political advice and political direction they've been given by their leaders have all failed the past few years. Will they continue doing the same thing and expect to get better results? It doesn't make any sense. Even without political interference by their leaders, they should be able to make the right choice and say, no, we'll do this one instead of this one. This one is better. You know, choose by yourself, emancipate yourself, so that tomorrow we can't continue blaming just the leaders. If they make the same mistake in a few years, that means it will no longer be the fault of the leaders, but the followers this time around. Because it has happened before, happened a second time, you expect to do the same mistake a third time, to get a different result. It doesn't make any sense. And it's time to stop the generalization. The North is no longer the North of the 60s or 70s. There might be violence here and there, but majority of them just want to live a life like their Southern counterparts. Yes, that's an emir in Adamawa state singing a hymn with Christians during Easter. This kind of religious tolerance exists in many places, even in the far northern state of Sokoto. So let people stop the generalization. Just like when people will say, you read in the comments, you see, ah, Yorubas did this, Igbos did that. No, 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 that's what the politicians want you to do. They want you to continue being divided so that they will be stealing doing all sorts of things because you are not focusing on the main issues, you are focusing on ethnicity, things that don't matter. We are all humans, we are all black people, why should we be looking at what divides us instead of what unites us? It's time Nigerians prove to the world that we are not what they think we are. Most foreigners are blaming Nigerians for what is happening today, but Nigerians have no business. Nigerians voted on that day, they did their abracadabra and look at where we have found ourselves. So it's time to do something different so as to get a different result. If you continue doing the same thing, you continue getting the same result. Don't be distracted by people who are paid to launder the image. They are doing their job. The reason they can do that kind of job is simply because the country is in poverty. If they had good paying jobs, they wouldn't have time to be defending the indefensible. They wouldn't in good conscience have time to be defending hunger, hardship and suffering. Yes, that's the reality. Anyone that says you cannot criticize the government, they don't like you to criticize the government, the person is the enemy of Nigeria. Because no one is perfect, no matter the good intentions anyone has, the person is bound to make mistakes. It's by pointing out errors in their judgment and in their activities that they will say, ah, we missed this one and this man pointed it out. Okay, we take correction, we move. That's how it is done. Look at all the countries that are doing well, they always have strong opposition who continue to criticize the government in power. Without that, you cannot have good governance. We cannot all be yes men. We cannot all be supporting one person. No, it's not possible. Thanks for watching.